Hi, I'm Rob Davis here on the second hole at the Abbey where we've got quite a deep greenside bunker. Um, this video is all about trying to get out of these first time every time. Uh, or certainly try and do a better job than this guy behind me. Let's raise your game. So we're in the middle of a bunker, we've got a reasonable amount of sand, but we've got a really steep face in front of us. We definitely need some loft. So the first thing we need to get right is your setup. And definitely the key thing to getting in this first bit is getting the club face pointing up to the sky. So the grooves of the club are literally facing straight upwards, almost as if you could balance a bottle of water on the club face. Um, so you can see for me to achieve this, the actual handle, if anything, is leaning slightly backwards. Uh, I see people actually twisting the club face to get some loft. I don't really think you need to do that. Keep it nice and simple. Handle down and backwards. Feel as though the grooves are pointing up. The next thing in the setup is to get the ball position forwards because ideally we're trying to get the club sliding under the golf ball, hitting the sand first. So having the ball further forwards in the stance is definitely going to help you achieve that. And when we've got the club actually lying upwards almost, the bottom of the club is going to hit the sand first, what we call the bounce. This helps us not to dig too deeply into the sand. We're trying to take a nice shallow layer. So getting that set up right, ball position forwards, grooves pointing to the sky, feet shuffled into the sand a little bit is definitely going to help. So because we're going to hit the sand before the golf ball, we definitely need a certain amount of club head speed. So I would advise in the backswing you take your normal length backswing. So a lot of people struggling to get out of bunkers because the backswing becomes very short. You're really not going to generate enough momentum because we're hitting that sand first to get that ball lifting out. So make sure you're going to go full length backswing. If you're a little bit more skilled golfer, as you come back, you can potentially add even more loft to the club by twisting the handle a little bit. A um, little bit trickier that perhaps for mid to higher handicappers. So as long as we've got the setup right, club face pointing to the sky, normal length backswing, keep it as simple as that. So the key to the downswing is to make sure through impact we're taking the right amount of sand, the right depth of sand, um, with plenty of loft. Uh, so as you're coming through the golf ball, I would definitely be focusing your eyes a couple of inches before the golf ball. Uh, and a good practice swing as you're coming through the bottom half of your swing is trying to feel as though you've still got that club face pointing upwards. If that loft disappears, again we're likely to get it going out lower or get the leading edge digging into the sand a little bit too much and we don't get it out. So let's give it a go. Feet shuffled in, ball position forwards, grooves face into the sky. Keep that loft through impact, slide in that club. Under the golf ball. Popped up nicely, no problem at all. So if you're unlucky enough for your ball to finish kind of semi-plugged in the face of the bunker. Um, we play it a little bit differently. Um, we don't really need to open the face so much for this one because if we just simply swing that golf club into the sand a couple of inches before the ball, we're not really gonna get much of a follow through. So accept that's gonna happen. Um, and it needs a bit of power as well. So you need to be quite aggressive with it. And notice this time I haven't got my 58 degree wedge. I've actually gone for a pitching wedge for this one because I know the ball is literally just gonna pop straight up in the air. So you're not gonna get it rolling out a great deal. Make sure you're kind of leaning into the bank slightly. 
Uh, I see some people tilted a bit this way. For me, that's going to equal hitting the sand way, way, way before the golf ball. So actually kind of leaning into the slope a bit. Handle actually could be slightly forward with the face pretty square on. And nice and aggressively slam that club into the bank a couple of inches before the golf ball. And just watch that ball pop up. <laughs> face full of sand on that one. So in this situation, I've raked a bit of the sand away to represent more of a hard pan lie, or certainly a feeling where there's not that much sand under the golf ball. You can often get a feeling for it straight away, just by kind of when you're walking in. Um, and we do have to play this shot a little bit differently. Uh, when we're setting up for this one, I certainly wouldn't feel as though I'm gonna open the face quite so much, because that's gonna increase the bounce angle. Uh, and if we do that, we risk the club skipping off that hard pan lie, maybe catching the ball a little bit cleanly so it's shooting very low into the face of the bunker and not getting out. So I would play this with the club face a little bit more squarely. And in the swing itself, I would encourage you to get a bit steeper. Uh, so you're actually going to feel as though the club is going to come up a bit more vertically a bit sooner as opposed to your normal swing. So club face a little bit more square. Watch out, this is going to come out a bit quicker, so watch your speed. Feel like you're going to put a little bit less effort into this one. Just a little bit of sand and pop it out. Not too difficult even with hard pan life. So I hope that's given you a few good ideas on how to get out of steeper face deep bunkers a bit more successfully. If so, please thumbs up the video and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. Follow us on our usual social channels too. Thanks for watching and catch you next time. Oh, that's all over it.